Hello everyone, welcome back to another chainmail tutorial. Very excited about the one today because I'm going to be teaching you how to make scale mail. This is, I think, one of the most impressive looking chainmail arts while also being kind of the easiest and the fastest. Today I'm going to be showing you actually how to make scale mail, but also showing you how to make this uh, shoulder piece that I've had a lot of interest in on my TikTok and Instagram. So a lot of people have been asking for a pattern. So this is going to be it. So you can learn it all in one, baby. This is just a small piece that I had on hand to show you, but today we're actually going to be working with these beautiful scales. For this video, I'm actually working with the Ring Lord. They very graciously sent me all the supplies for what we're making today. These are their laser engraved scales. So this is in the large size. The background color is just sort of like a copper scale, but it's got this beautiful Damascus pattern and they have all sorts of custom laser etching that you can do on their scales. This is just one that they have um, that I chose to work with. So we're gonna make a very cool pauldron. I've never used, I've never worked with any of their laser engraved scales. So I'm excited to see how this looks when it's all done. And then to connect them, I'll just be using a 16 gauge 5 16 inch ring. This is in the color champagne um, and it's their anodized aluminum. I'll have a code on the screen Woo! for a discount that you guys can use for these supplies. To start your prep work, you're actually just gonna start opening a bunch of your rings. Just get them, you know, slightly open. Sort of the same openness that I talked about in my European foreign one tutorial. So you're just gonna get a big old bunch of them. Again, this is just my personal method of how I like to work. I like to get all of my materials prepped before I start because as we know, chain mail takes a very long time. And once I get started, I don't wanna have to like stop a million times to get all of my materials prepped. So I like to just start by opening up all of my rings. I've actually already secretly done this beforehand. <laughs> so I have a ton of rings ready to go. So let's rock. With scale mail, you're actually always working from the back um, of the project. So say goodbye to our beautiful pattern for now. So we're starting in this position. You're gonna start with three scales and sort of line them up like this because from the front, they'll be all layered up, but I like to have them out just so that I know how much I'm working with. So you're, you're almost always starting from a point and making kind of like a triangle shape, especially for what we're working with um, this piece now. So we're gonna start with a little triangle shape. So you're gonna grab a few of your rings. I work from right to left. It obviously doesn't matter which direction you go, um, left to right, whatever. So I go down through this rightmost ring so I've got my little hook going down through that one. And then I go, I'm gonna go up through this one in the middle, just like that. And then we're gonna close that. And we're gonna do something similar on the other side, except we're going down through the middle one now and going up through this one on the left side and close. So what we've done now is we've made our first two rows. And after every row that I finish, I sort of like to lay it out because um, they can get sort of all flip floppy all over each other. So it just helps to start every new row by getting them all oriented the same way. So if I'm going onto my third row, this one's gonna have three in it. So I just like to set them out. So I know exactly how many I'm working with because once you get more, it can get a, it can start to get confusing and you'll be like, ooh, did I miss a scale or did I not? So it helps to just like know exactly how many you have for this row. So if you miss one, it'll be more noticeable. Again, let me, let me bring you in on this one. You're going to go down through your furthermost one. And now this is your new row that you're working from. So you're going up into that one and close. And now you've got a middle one to work with. So now we're putting this one in between. Down through that one. And then you can kind of just place that one on top. Like that. And you're gonna take another ring. And you're going down through this middle one that you're working on. And then you can sort of pick up this one from the second row and then plop it on there. Close. Okay, so now we just have one more to do on this row. So again, you're going down through this hole and then this last one just goes right on top and close. 
But once again, I'm gonna lay, make sure everything's laying correctly before I start my next row. And there you go, you've got one, two, three. And then when we flip it over, you've got the beginnings of a little, little scale piece. Very nice. Every row that you do is going to have, theoretically, <laughs> every row that you do is going to have one more than the previous row. So it's very easy to keep track of your rows because it's real, It's just one, two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then however many you want to do. For this specific pauldron, we're going to hit a point where we, where we will start coming back in and alternating. So I get down to about like nine or ten rows, and then I'll go, instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, I'll go... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, ten, nine, ten, nine, ten, nine. So that way you get sort of like a, a straight section. So you're not just going out forever. And if you ever get like lost, if you're like, oh, I don't remember which one I'm on. If you ever have one that's like in the middle and it only has one ring on it, then that's the one that you're still working from. So like this is my outside one. So that one doesn't, doesn't, isn't the one that I'm talking about. <laughs> but this one is the one that we left off on. Hook that in. And then we've just got our last one, hooking into this outermost one, down, place it on top, and close. So I was saying at the beginning, I think scale mail is so much more satisfying because you can get a really large piece done in quite a short amount of time because the scales cover so much more ground. And now we've got, that was our fourth row. And you just, you just keep going. So I think it's four, three, four, five. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna time lapse you until I get out to my 10th row. And then I'll show you that little switch up that we do to get a straight line down. I have now gone out to my widest row, which on this is nine wide. Uh, this isn't quite as wide as my black piece that I showed earlier. That one has 10 is like the widest I have across, but I don't have quite as many of these scales. So I'm making it work. But that's the great thing about this is it's so customizable. So if you have a larger arm, you can go out as wide as you want. My friend Siberia made one of these and I think he went 12 wide. So when he got to his widest part, he went 12, 11, 12, 11, 12, 11. So I will be going from nine, eight, nine, eight. And again, I don't have that many scales. So I will only have a few of this um, alternating straight section, and then we'll go down. I'm gonna get our next row. So I'm at nine right now. So now we're just gonna go back down to eight. Okay, so I'm gonna do eight, five, six, and eight. So instead of continuing to work from your outermost piece, so this is the first or the ninth, whatever, however you wanna refer to it. So you're just treating your new row from the middle. So you're treating this like it's, you know, just, it's just going in the middle instead of on the outside. Connecting and just doing that all the way across until you have your eighth row. Okay, so finishing, that was back down to a row of eight. So I'm gonna get those all laid on top. Okay, so now you've gone to eight, nine was your widest, and then back down to eight. And then I'm going to do another row of nine. Like I said, this makes it ultra flexible. This one is going to be shorter than my other one, but you can really make it as long or as short as you want. This will be like a little bit more of a cap sleeve look, um, but this is the exact same method that I used when I did like my full scale sleeves. Um, so you can just alternate back and forth from your widest point to get your desired length. So I have done all of the straight alternating that I can do with the amount of rings that I have. So again, I have all the way down to nine and then a row of eight, a row of nine, a row of eight. And now I'm gonna go back down to a point. You can, I guess, leave it like a straighter edge if you want. I like to bring it all the way back down into like a tapered point. Um, so yeah, I could just, I'm going to continue on with a row of seven and then six and then five and you get it, here we go. We have finished down to our single row point. This is the first time I'm flipping it over. Usually I flip it over like a million times while I'm working, but I wanted this one to be a surprise because it's fun scales. Okay, ready? Ooh, that looks so sick. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. 
Okay, so that's the base of like the scale portion. And this exact idea can be applied to so many different things, not just the pauldron. You could make a whole big wide chest piece or like uh, something for your torso or your legs or anything, but that is just kind of the basic construction of how you put it together. For this black shoulder piece that I made, I do have a strap that goes on the underside of my bicep because this one is considerably longer. I'll show the difference here. So this is, I mean, it's almost like half. The one that I just made is about half the length. Um, so since this goes down farther on my arm, I did um, a little strap across the bicep so that it wouldn't be like flapping all over my arm. Um, but disregarding that, depending on your length, you might want to add this. If not, all we have to do now is add the strap to go across our bodies. For this one, I did sort of a, it's like one and a half four in ones wide or one, two, three, four, five, five individual rows wide. So I'm going to do that same thing. I've been working with the champagne colored rings for the back of this piece, but I do actually have some bronze rings um, from a previous project. So I might get a little jazzy and like use a little bit of both of them just to bring that bronze color into the strap. I don't have a ton of the bronze rings to work with, but I think what I'm gonna do since it's five wide, since like the strap that I'm gonna make is five wide, I think I'm gonna do champagne, bronze, champagne, bronze, champagne. So it'll be sort of three stripes. So let's see how that looks. To do this strap, I'm going to close a bunch of my bronze rings. And let me close a bunch of these rings. Oh my God, that took so long. My hands hurt, but we're, we're moving on. We are gonna start making our foreign ones. Um, I'm doing, again, this like jazzy little color pattern, but if you're just doing all one color ring, don't worry about this, but you will start doing, um, make foreign ones. And for me, since I'm doing this fun color variation, I'm doing the champagne in the center and then my bronze as my four that I'm putting on. But I hate, I always have like leftover on a project. So if I can use them in something else, I like to. Back to a time lapse, we're gonna do a bunch of these. Now I have all of my four in one bundles and I'm going to start making a row out of them. And once you have your desired length of your strap, to get that a little bit thicker, I'm gonna go in with another row on each side and you're just gonna connect two at a time. So you got a ring through two, next ring will go through the, this one above it and the one that you've already put one through. So that every ring on each side has two going through it. And I'll do that on the other side. All the way up. Now that I have my full uh, strap chain assembled, now we are going to attach it to the pauldron. I'll admit I'm no professional at attachments, but this is just how I did mine and it worked. This is the top point of my pauldron. So I'm gonna take the outermost ring on my strap, open that up, and I'm gonna loop it through this top hole, like that. And then the center ring in the chain, looping it through the second scale down. And then the same for the third most, looping it through the third scale down. And then we're gonna come around, make sure that your strap loops around and then we'll be connecting to this bottom point for the last three on that row so i'm gonna take the top one here loop it through the third one out and the same all the way down and if you're feeling like these attachment points aren't working with you, feel free to play around with this. Like I said, I am um, admittedly like not the best at attachments, so I kind of just make it up <laughs> normally. And whether that's successful or not, I cannot be the judge. All right, and with that, she is finished. 
So here is the shoulder piece that we made today. I think it turned out so beautiful. I think this will be really great for like a, sort of an ice warrior kind of look with like that bronze and the white showing through. So here's how it turned out. I am working on getting kits made with the Ring Lord, um, and those kits will be for this size, and I'll also show you how to put this on. The attachment points that I used in the video, this is for my right shoulder, so if you want to be on your left shoulder, you just do the opposite attachment points. So like I said, this one is longer, so I do have to put my arm through the loop first. And then this strap goes under my left arm, like that. And then it sits on my shoulder like this. And I really like this length a lot more. I think it's a lot more flattering. So I might go back at some point, get more of those scales and extend that. Cause I just think this looks so cool. So I hope this video helped you learn scale mail. I hope it could help you make this beautiful pauldron piece. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know if you make this piece, tag me on social media. I would love to see it. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.